Hackerman, the Space Knight. In the 21st century, young space pilot Barry Gallagher is selected to wear a powerful suit of space armor. This armor transforms Barry into Tekaman the Space Knight, the mightiest superhero in the universe. Tekaman, the Space Knight, heroically protects the Earth from evil alien robots and battles them in deep space. With his space lance, Tekaman is invincible. Tekaman, the Space Knight, is the world's greatest defender. By the year 2037, all the nations of Earth have peacefully united into one democratic world government, and the rapid advancement of Earth's space program has made it possible to build a space station orbiting Pluto. From this space station, the first interstellar expedition, commanded by Captain Robert Gallagher, is launched toward the distant stars. Well, Tom, here we go, into the dark unknown. Captain, do you really think we'll find new worlds? I certainly hope so. What? Yes, I'm sure that we will. We must. Look, Earth is becoming overpopulated. Pollution is harder to control. And natural resources are slowly diminishing. Humanity has outgrown a single planet. We need to find more worlds, not just for scientific research, but so that mankind can spread and colonize new frontiers. Can Dr. Richardson's new Tekka transports work for colonization? Yes, the new flight method should work smoothly. And so will the space development program. Captain, unidentified space objects approaching. Meteors? No, my instruments are definitely picking up some kind of force field. What? Captain, I think they're non-human spaceships. Hmm. Back on Earth, at the World Science Center, a central headquarters for the advancement of Earth sciences, young space pilot Barry Gallagher observes the stars. Uncle Bob, good luck with your mission. Barry, your uncle's ship! Patricia, what's wrong? Hurry to the control room. World Science Center from Space Angel. World Science Center from Space Angel. We are under attack. World Science Center, we're under attack by alien devices. Captain Gallagher, what's happening? World Science Center from Space Angel. World Science Center from Space Angel. Our gravity control system has been deactivated. Everyone, to the escape ship. Alien Space Angel, can you escape? 
Bob! Uncle Bob, come in! Come in! Uh, it's unbelievable. The space angel has completely disappeared. I can't believe it. What's happened to Uncle Bob? Were he and his crew able to use the escape ship and jettison from the Space Angel? He must have. But where is he now? Well, I'm going to find out. Barry, my dad would like to see you now. What, right now? This is my private laboratory. Huh? Pegas! Okay. <laughs> well, Barry, this is Pegasus. He's the latest application of my Tekka alloy. Pegasus is not just an oversized robot. He's the carrier for a powerful suit of space armor, which is the ultimate use of my Tekka alloy. Oh, wow. Oh. Uh, doctor, what's this? That is the interlock chamber. It's where you will transform into Tekka Man. Tekka Man? That's right. With my Tekka armor, your strength will be magnified a thousandfold. My strength? A thousandfold? Incredible! At least a thousandfold. Maybe much more. I haven't tested the armor's limits yet. Barry, we need you to be Tekka Man the Space Knight. Tekka Man the Space Knight? Yes. You are the one space pilot with the greatest physical as well as mental abilities for this project. As Tekka Man, you'll be the world's greatest defender against the aliens. Tekka Man. During the weeks that follow, Barry trains in the Tekka armor. The World Science Center, through its Pluto space station, searches for the Space Angel's escape ship. Then, unknown to all, a strange alien visitor comes to Earth. This is the planet I've come to save. The alien visitor arrives at the World Science Center and closely examines it from the outside. Hey, you 
better be careful with that thing. Whoa, sorry, but I didn't see you behind the gate. What are you doing here? Is that giant robot a wind-up or a battery-operated toy? What? This toy happens to be the greatest defense mechanism the world has ever had. <laughs> that piece of junk? You've got to be kidding me. What? You'll never be able to defend Earth with that. Listen here, you. Earth is facing its greatest threat, and you're playing in that cast-iron creep. What do you know about threats? You better be quiet. You're not supposed to be here anyway. Get out of here now. Ah, oh, don't bother me. What? Yeah! Take this! Ah! Ah, temper, temper. I'm going to save the guards the trouble and throw you out of here personally. How about a tour of your center? We don't have time for wise guy tourists here, fuzzhead. Hi. <gasps> oh, Barry! Barry, stop it! Ah, you! Stop it now! Who is this? Why are you fighting? What's going on? Who is this guy? A troublemaker. Pleasure meeting you. <laughs> Learn to fly, that toy of yours. You'll see me later. Suddenly, the mysterious aliens enter the solar system and raid the unmanned Pluto space station. There is no longer any doubt of their hostility. Scientists discover that the alien's flight path leads straight to Earth itself. And now the World Science Center prepares to retaliate with space interceptor rockets. Dr. Richardson, I must see you. Hello there, Barry. What is it? Have a seat. I request to take Pegasus out to the battle zone. What? Sir, I've had enough practice with both Pegasus and the Tekka shuttle. No. But I'm ready and able. As Tekka man, I could more than stop those alien devices. No, I must make more tests. Try to understand. I don't want anything to go wrong. Barry, a malfunction could occur while you're transforming into Tekka man. And I don't want anything like that to happen. Sure, it's unlikely, but I still don't want to take any risk. So the aliens get away with raiding the space station, just like they did with my uncle's ship. I'm not going to let them get away with it twice. I understand how you feel, but I'm not giving you permission to go out there until the tests are completely finished. Besides, you know that... Sorry, I'm going. Wait! Barry! So this is the Tekka shuttle. Let's see what it'll do. Tekka shuttle, prepare for launch. The Tekka shuttle is the World Science Center's most powerful spacecraft capable of phenomenal speeds for rapid interplanetary travel. The craft and its launch procedure are fully automated. First, the shuttle is fired by booster cars up the launch track. Then it separates from them, rocketing off into outer space. In space, the Tekka shuttle links up with the orbiting space wing, a component which gives the craft extra fuel and maneuverability. Leaving Earth's atmosphere. Okay, computer. Destination point G932 W0688. Roger, point G932 W0688. Hey, computer, I'm starving. Your lunch is served. Wow, sandwiches. Mmm, mmm, mmm. <laughs> Hi, Barry. Patricia. Don't look so surprised. I thought you'd need some assistance with running the ship's computer. Captain, unidentified space objects approaching. Aliens. Look out! Ah! 
I'm going to give those alien devices a taste of their own medicine. Quick, turn us around. Patricia, work the computer. Where are you going? No time to explain. Pegasus, interlock. Barry! Power! On! Inside the interlock chamber, Barry Gallagher transforms into Tekka Man, the Space Knight. Barry, come back! Oh, what's going on? Battle stations, Pegasus! Here they come! Ah! Pegasus! Like a medieval knight on horseback, Barry Gallagher as Pekka Man, the Space Knight, stands on the robot Pegasus while holding a space lance in his fist. Take this! Those alien devices are only robots. Tentacles, they can't hold me! I did it! Take that! This will stop you. Space Lariat. No more waiting for you. These alien machines are everywhere. Yeah! Okay, robots, come and get me! Take a man, but first, please, is deactivated. Yes, and here comes the second. After those robots, Pegasus! Roger. Magnet boots off. Okay, guys, the party's over. One! Two! And three robots out of action! This armor is indestructible! Nothing can stop Tekka Man the Space Knight! Spur Cutters! Stop robot carrier! Power shield activated! Magnet boots on! Okay, Pegasus, is this the last robot ship? Affirmative. Bullseye! Good work, Pegasus! Those aliens are finished! <coughs> Barry! Patricia, I did it! I became Tekka Man! Tekka Man? Are you all right? <laughs> you again! Oh, you stowed away! That was frankly better than I'd expected. The Earth may have some hope after all. Who are you? Oh, you can call me Andro. How did you get on board? All the hatches were sealed. You want to know who they are? They're known as the Waldarians. Waldarians? No planet has ever held out against them. Waldarians? Most of them are just robots. Only the Emperor and a few high officials are true Waldarians. They won't get Earth. Well, they've never come up against anything like Tekka Man before. This is a new situation. 
This time they're in for a surprise. <laughs> Take a shuttle coming in to land. Computer shutdown. Tekka shuttle crew now disembarking Tekka shuttle. Well, they seem to have been unhurt. Great. Send all of them through the airlock. What's wrong with Dr. Richardson? Hey, wait. Who's that with him? A third crew member? Who on earth is that guy? Tekka shuttle crew, please report to Dr. Richardson's private laboratory. Repeat, Tekka shuttle crew, please report to Dr. Richardson's private laboratory. Dr. Richardson, sir, I realize you may be angry with me because I took off against your orders, but I had to stop the enemy robots and I did. I transformed into Tekka Man the Space Knight. That's true, Father. Tekka Man the Space Knight deactivated all of the enemy robots. Oh, and Doctor, this is Andro. He... Hey, where did he go? Both of you listen. You disobeyed my orders by stealing the Tekka shuttle, and I will not tolerate this unscientific behavior. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry too, Barry. A malfunction may have occurred while you were inside of the interlock chamber, transforming into Tekka Man. But, Doctor, I feel great. That's not the point. Dynamic physical forces are used when you turn into Tekka Man. I'm not taking chances. Report to the Science Center's hospital as soon as possible. Doctor, I tell you, I'm fine. Besides, the alien robots will surely attack in retaliation, and Earth is going to need Tekka Man again. I'm canceling Project Tekka Man. Well, for how long? Until you complete your medical examinations and learn to follow my orders, Captain Gallagher. Sir, I apologize for disobeying your orders, but I just had to stop those Waldarian robots! Father, don't be too hard on Barry. Patricia, I realize that Barry is trying to do what's right, but I'm worried about his safety. The alien Waldarians are unpredictable. Barry will have to follow my orders from now on, and you had better do the same. Sorry, Father. It won't happen again. I've got to follow orders from now on. And as soon as the medical tests are completed, the doctor must allow Project Tekka Man to continue. Nothing can stand in its way. Barry, stop it now. What? Don't be so short-tempered and angry all of the time. Why, my father's only worried about your safety. Well, I'm worried about the Earth's safety. And I... I... Ah! Barry, what's wrong? Oh! Speak to me, Barry! Ah, where am I? You're at the hospital, at the World Science Center. What happened? You were exposed to powerful forces in the interlock chamber and your condition shows signs of physical as well as mental exhaustion. Father was right, and you've got to rest. Where is he now? At a security meeting of the world's scientific and defense leaders. But it's all top secret. No unauthorized personnel are allowed. Wait! Where do you think you're going? Come back here, Barry! You've got to rest! Oh, what are you doing here? We're here to discuss the biggest problem Earth has ever faced. Alien invasion. 
Correction, Dr. Richardson. Why the interruption, Professor Berger? Please excuse me, Senator Martinez, but I feel the Earth's biggest problems are growing overpopulation and pollution. I disagree with Dr. Richardson's statement that the robot aliens are our largest problem. Professor, I sent out the Space Angel for those exact reasons, and the aliens captured it. There is no doubt that the alien threat is our number one concern, but the question is, how do we defend ourselves from them? Can our automatic space weapons stand up to the technology of the aliens? Dr. Richardson, what's the news on your new space armor? It's still experimental. Well, does anybody know what the alien motivation is for attacking us? We have to assume the worst, that they want to conquer the whole solar system. Brigadier Hathaway, what kinds of space defenses do we presently have? Thank you, Senator Martinez. At the moment, we have four types of space weaponry. Interceptor missiles, magma space jets, battle rockets, and space battle station. However, I can't really say how well these defense weapons will work against the alien robots. You see, because they can quickly travel back and forth between Earth and Pluto, their technology must be at least a thousand years ahead of our own. So I wonder hope may be to somehow utilize Dr. Richardson's Tekka armor for defense purposes. An important space message has just come in. The space relay station near Neptune was raided by alien robots. What? Sir, a message? Yes, sir. The computer says the giant Waldaurian space carriers are quickly moving into our solar system and closing in on the Earth. We're running out of time. Well, I will need to complete my tests on the tech armor and then consider using it. But what shall we do until then? This what? is Hathaway's yes, what? responsibility. What can we do? This is awful. I've got an idea. Yes, Captain Adams, what is it? I suggest that we try signing a peace treaty of some kind with these mighty aliens, even if it means surrendering to them. But we tried already, and they won't acknowledge us. They only destroy. Well, we've got to try. It's crazy. I think that Captain Adams may be right. We should sign a peace treaty. I can go and meet the Waldarians as the Earth's representative. If you go, they'll surely capture you. No, they won't. Not if we bring them a peace treaty from the planet Earth. It's better than no planet at all. What have we got to lose? It's better than no planet at all. I've got to finish the test on Barry and the Tekka armor right away. Adams, where should the meeting be held? One of the moons of Saturn? We've got to notify the aliens. The Earth ship Red Arrow, piloted by Captain Adams and a small crew, rockets toward Mimas, the innermost moon of Saturn, to sign a peace treaty with the unknown aliens. Continue on course 7.29. Roger. Finally, the Red Arrow reaches the moon and sets down. Then its crew members board their space hover cars and head for the rendezvous area. This is the rendezvous point, Captain Adams. Huh? Hold it. Hello! We are the representatives dispatched from Earth. I am Captain Adams, and we wish to sign a peace treaty with you. Do you understand me? We have come to talk for peace. Look! What is that thing? Is that a man or a robot? We have been waiting for you, Earthlings. I am Commander Rendrax of the Waldarian Empire. We've come to ask you to sign a peace treaty with the Earth. A peace treaty? You earthling fools! We have no word like peace in our language. Now you will all become our slaves. Resistance is useless. <laughs> but wait! Can't we talk it over? Now that we've destroyed their transportation, they cannot escape! <laughs> oh, great space effort, Everall! It is an honor to be in your royal presence! Commander Randolph, have you captured the Earthlings who intended to sign a peace treaty with us? 
Yes, Your Majesty. Our plans for invading Earth are proceeding smoothly. The Earthling's primitive technology is childish. Have you forgotten, Takamel the Space Knight? I want him destroyed. I will obey your command, Almighty Emperor Devereaux. Dr. Richardson, I could have escorted the Red Arrow Treaty ship as Tekaman the Space Knight and prevented its crew from being captured. I know I could have transformed into Tekaman with no problem. You may not have even survived. Barry, it would have been very dangerous, and if the Waldarians had gotten hold of you, physically disabled as you were today, who knows what they might have done. They might have even tried pulling the Tekka armor off you to obtain its secrets. Well, sir, I was willing to take that risk, and I feel that it's your fault that Captain Adams and his men were captured. Barry, stop it! How could you say such a thing? It was the others at that security meeting, not Father, who decided on sending Captain Adams and his men to Saturn's moon Mimas. Father was against the idea all along. Well... Barry, I just had to finish the test on the interlock chamber. You should be thanking my father for being so concerned with your safety. Why, inside the interlock chamber, who knows what may have happened to you? Father had to make those tests first. Well, I... You're just so short-tempered all of the time. It's amazing to me why you were chosen to become Tekka Man. Frankly, I don't think you can handle it. You're excused now. <laughs> I'm sorry, Patricia. I acted stupidly back there. Shouldn't you be apologizing to my father? Yes, I certainly will. Thanks for straightening me out. We all act that way sometimes. Oh, there you are, you two. Doctor? I need both of you to leave in the Tekka shuttle now. Tekka man, the space knight is needed. Dr. Richardson, I'm sorry. Forget it. Look, here comes Pegasus. He's completely programmed and ready to board the Tekka shuttle now. The interlock chamber inside him is safe and functional. It was replaced in Pegasus' legs today. You mean the interlock chamber in Pegasus won't harm Barry? That's right. Thanks to the test we've made, we found the power problem and solved it. So now Barry won't suffer any side effects. But if any problems do occur, you can take over for Barry and be Tekka Woman. <laughs> Ready to go? Yes, sir. Captain, unidentified space objects approaching. Uh oh, here they come. Warning, hostile aliens attacking. Oh no! Oh, Patricia! Okay. Pegasus, interlock! Roger. Inside the interlock chamber, Barry Gallagher transforms into Tekka Man, the Space Knight. Waldarian robots! Magnet boots off! 
You robots can't stop Techaman the Space Knight. Space Lance! This armor really is indestructible. Space Lariat! Vegas. Take this! Space Lariat! Power shield activated, Tech Man. Oh no, you don't! Power squeeze! Got to break in there. I did it! I'm inside the Waldarian space carrier. Now to redecorate this place. Well, that's an improvement. Where are those robots going? Space Lariat! Sorry, robot, this is a one-way street. Is that the power core? It is! I've got to deactivate it! Yeah! Patricia, wake up. Patricia! Are you all right? Wake up! Yes, yes, I'm fine. Tech Command, the Space Knight beat the Waldarians, didn't he? Uh-huh. Hey, the controls are moving by themselves. What? Oh, Andro, it's you again. Yes. While you were out, I managed to put this pile of bolts back together again. You know, I think you two are going to need my help to fight those evil Waldarian robots. What makes you think we want your help? Oh, you will. As soon as the Waldarian robots start their real invasion, what real invasion are you talking about? Hey, your sarcasm is starting to get on my nerves. Listen, when we get back to Earth, I insist you see Dr. Richardson and explain everything to him. Yeah, I guess I could tell the doctor a thing or two. Gentlemen, these secret designs may enable us to travel from galaxy to galaxy in the wink of an eye. They are the designs for my new Tekka Crystal rocket engine, powered by the basic Tekka crystals themselves. And I'm now proud to say that the prototype engine is finally completed. Chief Engineer, is the Tekka crystal engine now ready to be transported? Yes, Dr. Richardson, it is. Your prototype engine will be transported to Jupiter Space Station 101, where it will be connected to a magma rocket ship and then tested. Can you let us see the Jupiter Space Station on the view screen? Right. Here is a satellite picture of Space Station 101. It's a perfect area to test the crystal engine prototype. So far, the space station hasn't been detected by the Waldarians. Huh? What was that I saw? A green, shadowy creature. No, it couldn't be. I've been working too hard. Now I'm seeing things. Dr. Richardson's illusion becomes a reality when a Waldarian shadow spy materializes and sends infraspace messages to its leader. Meanwhile, outside the solar system, Commander Randrox's space carrier receives the shadow spy's message. Commander Randrox, our spy says the Earthlings have built a galactic space engine. Oh, but my dear Everett Everall, that electro-robot must be defective. The foolish Earthlings couldn't possibly have the intelligence to build such a device. Do not underestimate them, Randrox. That mysterious being they call Tekaman the Space Knight has already destroyed three of our robot fleets. These creatures from Earth are unpredictable. Have the Shadow Spy destroy this new engine. Yes, Your Majesty, but I find it hard to believe the Earthlings are that scientifically advanced. Quiet, Randrox. They may have more intelligence than you. 
Inside the main control room of the World Science Center... Has the Tekka shuttle returned? It's landing now, sir. It'll be down in a few more minutes. Uh, Dr. Richardson, I detected several strange radio space messages a moment ago, and not on any wavelength used by our ships. Did you record them? Yes, sir. I managed to record some. But the strange thing about them is that they seem to originate from here at the World Science Center. What? That shadowy figure I saw dematerializing. It must have been real. And it must have sent those radio space messages. The Tekka shuttle slowly descends into its launch hangar. Space pilot Barry Gallagher and computer controller Patricia Richardson report to Dr. Richardson's private laboratory immediately. Roger. Roger. Now, Andrew, if you're serious about joining us, you must talk to Dr. Richardson. He's our commander. Not so I can be examined. That's right. Well, I really don't care for needles. Really? Andrew, my father just wants to ask you some questions. Oops! There's the security checkpoint up ahead. In order to enter Dr. Richardson's laboratory, all personnel must pass a fingerprint and bioscan security check. Uh-oh, Andrew's disappeared. Well, at least he can't escape from this enclosed hallway. That's right. <laughs> Sir. I would like to know how you were able to board the Tekka shuttle when all of its hatches were completely sealed. And how did you know the name of the robot aliens before we did? Huh? Oh, Andro. I thought you'd left again. No. I just took the scenic route here. I would like some answers now. Well, Doctor, it's a kind of ESP. ESP? Yeah, would you like me to spell it? Well, if that's the case, Andro, you could be of great help to us in our fight against the Waldarians. Sure. I'm always willing to oblige. I can start by giving Tekka Man some pointers. You what? Stop it, you two. Don't start arguing again. Oh, amazing. This secret bioscan detector indicates that Andro is no ordinary human being. Barry, Patricia, Andro, we have a Waldarian spy here at the Science Center who knows about the Tekka Crystal Engine. We've got to stop it immediately. A oh? spy? Yes, it's some kind of electro-energy robot. Clearly not human. I caught a glimpse of it as it disappeared. Later, we picked up infraradio communications being sent from here to outside the solar system. The robot must have been sending details about my new engine. Is that why you called us in here? Yes, it could reveal all of our secrets, so we've got to get it. Here are your weapons. What are these two guns called? They're my new space bazookas. Space bazookas? Yes, each gun has the power to short out an electro-robot. And when snapped together, the two guns combined are capable of depowering an entire spaceship. Cute little toys, aren't they, Doctor? Near the main control room, where the Tekka Crystal rocket engine is being stored, Barry, Andro, and Patricia search for the Waldarian robot shadow spy. Where could that thing be? This silence is getting to me. Uh-oh. I sent something down there, and it's not human. Oh. It looks as though that Waldarian robot isn't going to show up at all. Oh, well. <gasps> Patricia, keep calm. You've got to deactivate that robot. Be calm. It's the blueprint vault. My plans are being stolen. Quick, Doctor, let's get over there. Right. Hold it, right where you are. Gotcha! 
Huh? I guess I missed it. Patricia! Speak to me, Patricia. Oh, she must have fainted. Technician, were any of the blueprints stolen? Sir, they've all been destroyed. Oh, no. Andrew, did you stop the shadow spy? No, I was busy putting a window in that wall right there. A window? You mean that big hole in the wall? <laughs> Patricia will be fine in a little while. The electro discharge from that robot must have briefly shocked her. Uh, uh. No, you've got to rest a while. <laughs> Looks like you should have been a nurse. Oh. An energy leak from the robot. Good that I kept my original notes for the Tekka Crystal engine here in my office when the blueprint vault was destroyed. Otherwise, I would have been lost. Oh, no, you don't. You're not going to get away from me this time. Ouch, that's smart. I'm going to deactivate you permanently. Phew. What? Doctor! Father, are you all right? Yes, I am, but that Waldarian robot spy isn't. Just take a look at that. Oh. <laughs> Did you deactivate it, Father? No, I didn't. I was busy working. Then who on earth did it? Me. Yours truly. I'm a pretty good sword thrower. Aren't I, Barry? Outside the solar system... Oh, great, Deverell! I don't know how to say this, but our shadow spy on Earth has just been shorted out. It has what? It has been deactivated, Master. Grand Gox, didn't I tell you that the Earth people were unpredictable? Now look at what has happened. Well, Your Majesty, I could send down another one of our shadow spies and have it, uh... You idiot. The Earth people are about to test their new engine. Concentrate on destroying it. Yes, sir. Back on Earth, the Tekka Crystal rocket engine is loaded aboard the Tekka shuttle in preparation for its first test in outer space. Then the shuttle's crew board the craft as well, along with Dr. Richardson and an engineer. The automatic launch procedure has started. First, the shuttle is fired by booster cars up the launch track. Then it separates from them, rocketing off into outer space. In space, the Tekka shuttle links up with the orbiting space wing, a component which gives the craft extra fuel and maneuverability. Then the Tekka shuttle reaches Space Station 101 and docks. The Tekka crystal rocket engine is unloaded from the shuttle and is set into position. Soon, a remote-controlled magma rocket ship will arrive at the station and will have the Tekka Crystal engine installed for its space flight tests. Meanwhile, Barry, Patricia, and Andro patrol the test area. Uh-oh! I've got an unidentified object coming at top speed straight toward us! What? Maybe it's just a meteor. The Waldarians don't know about this space station. Hey, pal, never underestimate your enemy, especially when it's those sneaky Waldarians. Well, in that case, I had better get out there as Tekka Man. Patricia, start the evacuation of the space station. Andro, you stand guard over the Tekka Crystal Engine. No way. I want to pull the plug on some of those robots. Sorry, but someone's got to watch the engine. All personnel, evacuate! 
Send out our robot fighter ship to intercept the Waldorian space carrier immediately! into action right now. Roger. Pegasus interlock. Power on. Inside the interlock chamber, Barry Gallagher transforms into Tekka Man, the Space Knight, the mightiest superhero in the universe. Take care of you, Waldarian robots. Magnet boots on. Robots attacking space station. You're right. After them, Pegasus. Doctor, it's too dangerous. You've got to evacuate with us. Leave now, both of you. Oh, father! What are you doing? You've got to evacuate. But I can't leave my engine here. We've got to get inside one of those robot ships. Destroy. Oh no, all my hard work is gone! Those fiendish Waldarians must have destroyed the doctor's engine! Okay, Space Lariat! Take that! Power jump! Now to get inside there. Space Lance! Nothing can defeat Tekka Man the Space Knight! Space Lariat! Magnet boots on! Pegasus, the main space carrier! Roger. Commander Redrocks, take a man is headed this way. What? Take a man? All right, let him attack us. I reduce him to particles of space dust. <laughs> well, Commander Randrox, we meet again. When I get my hands on you, I'll disassemble your android body piece by piece. Power shield activated, take a man. Very good, Pegasus! Space Lance! Ah! <laughs> Retreat! Retreat! Darn! He would have to ruin all my fun! Operation crash through! How far am I dead? Inside Commander Randrox's escape ship. Randrox, I was watching your foolish antics out there. 
You failed to capture the engine's inventor. He will obviously build yet another one. You failed again. But all is not lost. We now know that Decaman the Space Knight works with a space robot called Pegasus. This Pegasus may be Decaman's weak spot. <laughs> yes, Your Majesty. Blast! Even as Tekka Man, I couldn't save the Tekka Crystal rocket engine. Andro, couldn't you have guarded the engine better? Barry, no one is to blame for what has happened except for the Waldarian invaders. We should be thankful that nobody on the space station got hurt. As for the engine, I will just have to try to build another one someday. With help from you, Andro, you understand me? I don't know who Andro really is. But I do know that he is a friend, and he will help us. At last, the Waldarians have attacked Earth itself. They send their most powerful space robot, programmed to destroy the world's science center. In defense, the center's automatically controlled weapons fire back at the giant space robot. Got to stop that overgrown octopus! Pegasus, front and center. Affirmative, Barry Gallagher. Interlock. Roger. Power on. Inside the interlock chamber, Barry Gallagher transforms into Tekka Man, the Space Knight. That cast iron creep is nearing the control tower. Uh oh, here comes the cavalry. Weapons can't stop that giant robot! It must have powerful armor! Whoa! Take this, robot, and that! Wow! This giant is tough! Uh-oh! Look out! Shooting star! Timber! Check up another victory for Tekka Man, the Space Knight. You did it! Well done, Barry. As Tekka Man, you used the shooting star perfectly. Thank you, Doctor. But I suddenly feel weak for some reason. Of course you do, Barry. That shooting star takes a lot of mental energy to activate. And that's something we all know you don't have very much of. <laughs> hey, watch it, Fuzzhead. Barry, Andro does have a point. The shooting star takes a lot of energy, so you'll have to be careful when using it in the future. Yes, sir. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's some kind of space animal. Hello there. I wonder how it got inside that giant robot. Looks like a space squirrel of some kind. Let me have it. It might be a Waldarian spy trying to get into our base. No, it's not. Don't touch it. <laughs> it looks much too small and innocent to be dangerous. It's not harmful, Patricia. You might make it a pet. Great idea, Father. I will. Now, let's see. What name should I give you? I'm Moton. Oh, my gosh. You can talk. Yes, I can! I love you, Mouton. I don't believe it. That animal talked. Yes, it's clearly more intelligent than I thought. Hmm?
Later that night, outside the World Science Center... Andrew? Andrew? Huh? Oh, it's you. Are you thinking about our home planet up there? What? <laughs> oh, I know that you are not an Earthman. You're from Seto, like I am. Well, yes, Mutan, that's right. But that isn't any of your business, so keep quiet. All right. I won't say a word if you don't want me to. What are you doing here? Helping the Earth people to fight the Waldarians? Yeah, that's right. I'm helping Tekaman. Oh. You know, I was a prisoner of the Waldarians on Seto, but I sneaked aboard one of their giant robots so that I could escape. And so here I am. Say, Andrew, what is this planet Earth like? Like Sano used to be. You mean before the Second Ice Age came? Yeah. Oh, how nice! These Earth people are sure lucky. But now the Waldarians are attacking here, too. Do you want to help us defend Earth? I sure do! That's just great. With all of us working together, those crummy Waldarians don't have a chance. Hey, do the Earth people have the power of invisibility that we Sanoians do? No, Mutan, they don't. They don't have teleportation or any of our other powers. That's why they need our help. Back at the World Science Center... Barry, that Waldorian robot tried capturing Pegasus. What? The Waldorians must know that Pegasus is vital to your change into Tekaman. Well, what baffles me is how the Waldarians could have discovered this. It's all top secret. Maybe during one of my space battles, they analyzed Pegasus and figured out the interlock chamber. Yes, that's a possibility. We'll have to watch Pegasus more closely and make sure he's safe at all times. Remember, you couldn't transform into Tekaman if Pegasus were deactivated. Father, do you think I should set up a round-the-clock guard post outside Pegasus' hangar? That's a good idea, Patricia. Do that. I'll also have Andro patrol Pegasus' hangar. Why Andro? Doctor, there's something I just don't like about that guy. Oh! So there you are, Mouton. Tell me, where have you been? I was watching the stars. Oh? Did you see the star you came from? A uh, doctor about Mouton. Are you positively sure that she's not dangerous? Barry, listen. Not all space creatures are evil like the cruel Waldarians. Many are kind, peaceful, loving creatures, just like Mouton is. Yes, sir. Oh! Where is he going? Outside the solar system, in Commander Randrox's space carrier... Commander, the lava robot spies are ready to be beamed to Earth. Very good! Our first attempt to deactivate figures with the giant space robot failed. But this time, the lava robots will be triumphant! I obey. In the form of a meteorite, a Waldarian spaceship lands on Earth. Then its hatches open, and out fly the lava robot spies. The spies soon head for the World Science Center, but are suddenly distracted by Dr. Richardson's limo sports car passing by. Oh, what's the matter? I'm hearing strange noises! My Waldorian robots! Waldorians? Driver, stop! Yes, sir. <laughs> Oh, Mouton, what do you see out there? One, two, three, four, five Waldoria level robots! They are surrounding us! We'd better go back. I don't see anything. Ah! He's passed out. Attack! 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 Oh no, you don't! 
gotcha! Run away, robots, and don't come back! I retreated! Andro, is that you over there? Yes, Dr. Richardson, that's Andro! Oh my gosh! I don't believe it! Andro, how did you do that? Patricia, don't you know that a good magician never tells all of his secrets? Father! All right, I'll tell. I come from a planet in a distant star system. The planet's known as Sano. Sano is now going through its second ice age. All the people are safely resting in suspended animation under the surface, like ice cream bars, except for me, of course. The problem is, the Waldarians are waiting to invade as soon as Sano gets warm again. So the Sanoian elders sent me to go and stop the Waldarians before that happens. That's why I'm here to help you save Earth. At the same time, I'm making sure those Waldarian robots are demolished for good before Sano thaws out and they can come back to invade us. That's Tekaman the Space Knight's duty. Andro Tekaman the Space Knight was created to defend the universe from the Waldarians. Barry, be quiet. Oh, let Hothead have his say. Hothead? That's done it, Buster. I'm Earth's Defender and I don't need any help from you. You can go home right now and good riddance. Hey, Barry, grow up. I'm not too proud to admit that those Waldarian robot monsters are too much for yours truly. They're too much for any one person alone. But we can beat them together. I'm sure we can. Andrew's right, Barry. The two of you have got to work together to beat the Waldarians. What about me? I want to help stop the Waldarians too, Patricia. Everyone listen, I have an ideal plan for all of you. The four of you plus Pegasus will constitute a team to defend the Earth from the aliens and you'll use the Tekka shuttle. But Dr. Tekka Man, the Space Knight, doesn't need assistance from anyone or anything. Tekka Man is indestructible. Your idea of indestructible isn't necessarily the same as the Waldarians. That's right. Sorry, Barry, Tekka Man does need help. The four of you will be Earth's main defense team. You'll be of great help to us, Andro. I'll try, Doctor. Outside the solar system, in Commander Randrox's space carrier... Commander Randrox, one of our lava robots, reports that a man from Sano is helping the Earthlings fight us. A Sanoian? But they're all hiding under the ice on the chilly world of theirs! The spy reports that Tekaman the Space Knight is human. What? Tekaman is human? Yes, Tekaman is really a space pilot in armor made from Tekka. Tekka armor? Oh, oh, Your Majesty, Great Space Emperor Deverall! Commander Randolph, have our lava robots deactivated, Pegasus? Not yet, Master, but... But nothing. Randolph, go have the spies deactivate Tekaman Space Robot Pegasus now before I lose my temper. Yes, sir. Right away, immediately on the devil, mighty leader Deverall. Back on Earth at the World Science Center, the lava robot spies slip past the guards and prepare to deactivate Pegasus. Warning, alien robots trespassing. Warning, silence. You are going to sleep. I do not require sleep. I am a robot. That's what you think. This will deactivate you. I do not require required power ring circuits deactivated power power. Just outside Pegasus' hangar. Barry, are you still mad at Andro? Because you have to work with him now. Well, yes, Patricia. I guess I'm still mad at him. Andro's always sarcastic and a smart aleck. But I have to work with him. That's what Dr. Richardson wants, and he knows what he's doing. You're underestimating Andro's good points, Barry. He may someday be your best friend. Andro be my best friend? Uh-oh. Oh, 
Oh! Give the one who will speak with me their commands. Get ready to deactivate those robots, Patricia. Ah! Oh! Pegas! Pegas! We have the power to do your robot, Pegas, their command. Oh, no! Whoa! Ah! Fury! Oh. Andro! You are the Cenorium helping the Earthlings. Robots capture him. Just try it! How's this? Right hook! Pow! Your resistance is useless. Oh! It's another one of their giant robots! Take cover! Hey, what's Andro doing out there? Okay? Andro! You two take cover. I'll handle that mechanical misfit. Andro! You're coming with us. Whoops! There you are, Pegas! Oh, that star must have cut your circuits! Don't worry, I'll get it out. Uh. Hey, I can use that handle to knock the star out! Patricia, help me fire at that robot! I did it! Now to fix your wires! Red wire connected to the green wire! Now I'll patch you up! Pegas, speak to me! Hi. You're okay now! All circuits functioning normally, thank you, Mutan. Pegas, I thought the Waldarian lava robots deactivated you. They did, but Mutan repaid me. Really? Thanks, Mutan. You're welcome! Pegas, interlock! Roger. Power on! Inside Pegas, Barry Gallagher transforms into Techaman, the Space Knight. Okay, robots, here I come! Space Lance! Wow! No, you don't! Power jump! Take this! That short circuited you! Ah! My Space Lance is too far to reach! Shooting star! That robot shot a ray into my shooting star cavity. I'm becoming paralyzed! Barry! Barry! I can't move! Ah, now that monster's using...
using a heat ray on me. Hang on, Tucker Man. I'll save you. Whoa. Later, at the World Science Center's hospital... If only I could have retrieved the shooting star sooner, I wouldn't have been hit with that robot's paralyzing optobeam. That's right. The shooting star takes a lot of mental energy to make it work, and you just didn't have it. What? I see you two are doing just fine. That was some battle. Mutan, I want to thank you again for repairing Pegasus. Oh, it was nothing. At the World Science Center, there are several buildings known as the Greenhouse Domes. Inside each dome is a giant, scientifically monitored biosphere of natural plants, trees, flowers, rivers, ponds, and small woodland animals. All the World Science Center's personnel enjoy coming here to relax when off duty. Oh, hello there, little one. Gee, Barry, isn't it beautiful in here? I love it. Yes, it is, and it's too bad the outside isn't as beautiful since pollution has gotten out of control. Well, I'm sure that we will be rid of all pollution someday soon. friends with two squirrels and a baby rabbit. You did? Yep. I made friends with two squirrels, but when I tried making friends with some fish, they swam away. Ha! You should have swum after them. Mutan, did you want to tell us something? Oh, yes, I forgot. Brigadier Hathaway is going to test his space armada. Space armada? Brigadier Hathaway's space armada consists of 50 giant space battleships. Each spaceship carries many laser cannons and over 100 men. Now the entire fleet is preparing to travel outside the solar system to attack the Waldarian's mothership. I say, how marvelous! Everything is proceeding as scheduled! Brigadier Hathaway. Oh, Dr. Richardson, how are you? Splendid afternoon, isn't it? My invincible space armada is quite a sight. Yes, it is, Brigadier, but I've come to ask you to stop your planned attack. Stop my plans to attack? My good doctor, have you gone completely mad? Brigadier, it's foolish to go out there and attack such unknown forces. Waldorian technology is centuries ahead of our own. Dr. Richardson, I realize that, of course. But one must make do with what one has. I have my newly constructed space armada, and I am certain we shall triumph. I'm worried about the lives of those 5,000 men going up there. Please leave this to Tekaman the Space Knight. What can Tekaman the Space Knight do? He never arrives until the Waldarians have attacked. Tekaman doesn't go to the source of the problem. He only helps stop its latest outbreak. Whereas I intend to eliminate the problem once and for all. My armada will carry the battle straight to the Waldarians. But the Waldarians have the leap flight space capability. They can leave the solar system in the wink of an eye. If you approach them too closely, you'll be swept away with them into deep space. That's highly improbable, Doctor, since the new rocket engines in each battleship are of top standard. Well, I must get to my command post. We are starting the first tests. Doctor. Do you think what Brigadier Hathaway said is true? Is Tekka Man really not doing any serious good? Nonsense. Well, I'm just a little confused. Barry, don't listen to that windbag. Really? Sure. All of us are doing a great job of defending Earth, especially Tekka Man, and that's hard for me to admit. I guess you're right. But shouldn't we attack for once? Brigadier Hathaway can't attack Deverall, and neither can Tekaman. But Tekaman is... Now calm down, Barry. I realize that Hathaway has made you feel guilty by implying that Tekaman the Space Knight is not doing enough to stop the Waldorians. But that just isn't true. 
He's going to find out the hard way that he's sticking his nose in a hornet's nest. Later that night... I wonder if I am doing enough as Tekka Man the Space Knight. It's true that I only defend Earth when the Waldarian robots attack. Should I go on the offensive as well? Should I attack Randrox and Deverall? If they see we aren't afraid to come after them, they may stop trying to conquer Earth. Better not be hurt or Commander Randrox won't pay us. Huh? He's only a stupid kid. Oh! I'm a stupid kid, huh? Well, you're a pretty stupid shot since you never hit me once with your bullets. Oh, you're a wise guy. Yeah! Ah! Take this! Pow! Okay, playtime is over. Now you come along peaceably with us to the Waldarian spaceship, where you'll be taken outside the solar system to Randrox. Back at the World Science Center... Barry has disappeared? How long has he been missing? Since yesterday, I'm worried. When I saw him, he was driving away in his sports car. Don't worry, he probably drove off somewhere. I can go look for the hothead if you want me to. Hmm? Richardson here. Sir, the control room is receiving an incredible space message. A space message? From the Waldarian commander to us. I'll be right there. The World Science Center's infraspace communication system allows Earth to keep in instant contact with its distant space stations, since normal radio waves take hours to travel through space. Lieutenant, start communications. Yes, sir. <laughs> Greetings to all of you at the World Science Center. <laughs> this is your master, Commander Randrox, the leader of the Waldarians speaking. Commander Randrox, what is it? Are you, shall we say, looking for someone who is missing? Missing? Don't you know yet? I had space pilot Barry Gallagher kidnapped from Earth. Oh, Barry! Yes, I finally paid human criminals to do what our Waldarian robots could not. Now, listen to me carefully. How dreadful! I have your Barry Gallagher safely locked in a space tube. A space tube? Yes, and I'm going to send it into deep space. You see, with Barry Gallagher out of the way, Tekka Man the Space Knight will no longer exist. And with Tekka Man gone, we can finally conquer your pathetic little planet. <laughs> That's all there is. Brigadier Hathaway, sir. Saturn Station reports a huge spaceship has entered the solar system. Aha! 
Now is the opportunity for which I've been waiting. The Waldarians do not know about our new space armada. We can take them by surprise and annihilate them before they can use their superior technology. Sound in reporters! <laughs> Better leave now or I'll miss the boat. Hey, where's Andro? I think he snuck on board one of those battleships! Oh no! Good luck up there, Brigadier. Just remember, don't get too close to Randox's ship. Excellent launch! Very good, men! We shall intercept the Waldarians as they approach Saturn's orbit! All ships, full speed ahead! 